Why do species go extinct? Is it because of hunting by humans? Climate change? Falling meteors? Well, sometimes the answer lies in the long and complicated DNA sequence that encodes everything about an organism, its genome. The downfall of a species often goes like this. There is a period when populations decline in size and so does the species' geographic distribution. When very small numbers remain, genetics deliver the last blow. Small populations mean a decline in genetic diversity, which is necessary for adaptation. Inbreeding also occurs, which leads to detrimental conditions. Both of these effects increase the likelihood of the species dying out. Let's take the woolly mammoth. Mammoths appeared in East Asia some 800,000 years ago and were once widespread across Northern Asia, many parts of Europe and the northern part of North America in a biome known as the Tundra Steppe or the Mammoth Steppe. Sadly, mainland populations went extinct around the end of the Pleistocene era approximately 12,000 years ago as the climate fluctuated. The Holocene era, characterized by a warmer and more stable climate, brought about the decline of the Tundra Steppe and only small, isolated mammoth populations remained. The last surviving population lived in Wrangell Island on the Arctic Ocean and went extinct approximately 3,700 years ago. This population has been the focus of some groundbreaking genetic research. A 2015 study titled Complete Genomes Revealed Signatures of Demographic and Genetic Declines in the Woolly Mammoth, led by Eleftheria Palkopolo, along with the combined efforts of biologists from the US, Canada, Sweden and Russia, examined the genomes of two woolly mammoths. These two mammoths, although the same species, have variations in their genomes that are worth comparing. The first one is 4,300 years old and came from Wrangell Island, one of the last of its kind. The other individual is much older, nearly 45,000 years old, and lived near Oymikon in northeastern Siberia. The remains of the two mammoths had DNA extracted and the genomes sequenced. What did the scientists conclude from the two genomes? The mitochondrial genomes sequenced showed that the two mammoths were in different mitochondrial DNA clades, meaning that they were from very divergent populations. Then, the history of population size changes over time for the ancestors of the two mammoths was inferred using the pairwise sequentially Markovian coalescent, or the PSMC method. The method uses the density of heterozygous sites across the genome of one individual and the substitution rate, which is the rate at which genes from a randomly selected common ancestor in the population accumulate mutations. It determines the distribution of the time to the most recent common ancestor between the two alleles across chromosomes. In other words, it can predict how closely related the individual's ancestors were and therefore predict the size of the gene pool over time. As you can see, the Siberian and the Wrangell mammoths have identical demographic trajectories once the difference in their ages is corrected. Population bottlenecks occurred at around the time of the last glaciation leading to a severe decline in the number of ancestors. The genome of the Wrangell Island mammoth, as it was concluded, had a 20% reduction in heterozygosity. In contrast, when a measure called ROH, runs of homozygosity, was used, it found a 28-fold increase in homozygosity. This pattern gives strong evidence of background relatedness due to limited population size. This study was the first direct observation of genetic stochasticity in a species that is closely followed by its extinction. This study has opened doors for further studies on the Wrangell Island mammoth population. A 2017 paper by Rebecca Rogers and Montgomery Slatkin has used the same two genomic sequences from our focus study. When examining the more recently living Wrangell Island mammoth, it was found that the population bottleneck had resulted in an accumulation of deleterious mutations in the genome. Furthermore, a 2020 study by Aaron Fry and others had found that these mutations have resulted in developmental defects, low sperm counts and reduced male fertility, reduced sense of floral sense and diabetes, greatly reducing the biological fitness of the population. We can therefore conclude that the low genetic diversity has contributed to the degradation of biological fitness of Wrangell Island mammoths to this population's extinction and perhaps to the extinction of mammoths altogether. 
The approaches in the 2015 study and in successive research can be used in conservation biology to quantify the amount of biodiversity that is lost in a species when its numbers decline, and to determine whether the genetic diversity left in a species is sufficient for it to survive into the future. This is yet another reason to conserve endangered species of animals before their genetics tell us that it is too late.